gay, well, rights in Islam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. In this lesson, we'll discuss rights in Islam, Islamic laws, immoral behavior, and the result. Warning this lesson contains explicit content. Rights in Islam. Reiterating some basic concepts from the previous lesson, which are relevant to this topic, God has prescribed general rights, which all humans should have the privilege to live with. These rights provide citizens with a healthy, stable community wherein everyone has the opportunity to thrive and prosper. Included in our God-given rights are the right to live in peace and security, to be provided with protection of one's wealth, self and honour, the right to know one's lineage, and to live with equality and justice regardless of race or religion. Allah, God, knows human nature best as he is the one who created them. He therefore knows what is best for people in all circumstances. This is why Islam, the only religion based on authentic revelation, is a perfect way of life and includes a comprehensive framework for all times and all circumstances. Again, it is important to note here that Islam and the Islamic legal system being referred to in this lesson is that which was established by the Qur'an and revelation as implemented by Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, as opposed to oppressive and deviant Muslim rulers which have reigned at later periods throughout history. Under Islamic rule, societies flourished without prejudice. Not only Muslims, but other communities, such as the Jewish and Christian communities, benefited from the just leadership of the early Muslims. Islam provided justice and security, which enabled all citizens, regardless of race, to develop and progress academically. And this has even been reported by Western Orientalist scholars such as T.W. Arnold. So what is gay? Gay is a term used to describe the homosexual preference of a man. Lesbian is used in the case of women and bisexual for both genders. Referred to as LGB, these people have formed a movement. However, rights in Islam are not restricted to any minority group. Rather, all individuals of the society are to be afforded their God-given rights regardless of race, religion or any other description of minority groups. And in order to ensure that all members of society are given their rights, it is necessary for all members of that society to adhere to laws which contribute to a stable society and refrain from what destroys the cohesiveness of society. And as will be demonstrated, the Islamic legal system is the perfect system which provides a totally harmonious and prosperous society. This is achieved by encouraging everything which is good and beneficial for society and prohibiting everything that is harmful to society as a whole. One of the main factors that produced this model society in the past was the high moral emphasis of Islamic teachings for which marriage plays a very important role. Numerous studies conclude that the traditional family unit is the foundation of a happy, productive society, such as discussed by Waite and Gallagher in The Case for Marriage. And from the perspective of sexual activities, Cullen highlights many benefits of sexual intimacy within the marriage. Most importantly, this strengthens the marriage bond of husband and wife in the family unit and produces numerous positive outcomes, which affects the overall level of social coherence in society, especially in relation to children. In contrast, Western liberal legal systems, which promote immoral sexual conduct, have resulted in destroying social cohesion. As discussed in the previous lesson, these Western legal systems have resulted in high rates of crime, depression and suicide. About one in every three women are raped or sexually assaulted, 
and this even occurs in the workplace. About 80% have sexually transmitted diseases, in addition to a rise in perverted sexual activities. Morality before Islam was so degraded to the point that many men would sleep with a woman and she would just choose the father, and female infants were buried at birth. And morality after liberalism has led to women sleeping with men and not knowing the father, and the killing of infants until full term of pregnancy, as is legislated in New Zealand in 2020. Liberalism reverses all the benefits which Islam provides. As will be demonstrated in this lesson, sexual liberty affects the following rights of most people in society, including the right to live in peace and security, to be provided with protection of one's wealth, self and honour, and the right to know one's lineage. Islamic Laws the Islamic legal system provides all citizens with their rights, including peace, security and stability in society by establishing a comprehensive set of laws. The Islamic legal system is extremely extensive and includes not only criminal law, but also family law, business law, medical law, consumer law, environmental law and inheritance law to list a few. However, for the purpose of this lesson, we will discuss teachings and penalties related to immoral sexual conduct. Note, the application of punishment. Before beginning, it is important to note the following issues related to Islamic law enforcement. The place of authority, the enforcing officer, and the registration of crimes. The place of authority. Islamic law is only enforced in countries which rule by the Islamic legal system. Muslims have no authority to enforce Islamic law if they are living in a country which does not rule by the Islamic legal system, such as living in Western countries. The enforcing officer. It is only permissible for official authorities to enforce or carry out any punishments as ruled by the judge it is not permissible for just any Muslim to carry out punishments. Any Muslim who applies a penalty without instruction to do so by official authorities would face the criminal charges according to their actions, irrespective of the acts of the original criminal. In the event Muslim rulers do not carry out the set prescribed punishments, then the sin is on the ruler and it is not allowed for Muslim citizens to take the law into their own hands. And the registration of crimes. Furthermore, cases of criminal punishment are only implemented when they are presented to the ruling judge. For example, in the case a matter is forgiven by the people, there is no punishment as is illustrated by the following. A man brought a thief who stole his cloak to the messenger of Allah peace and blessings be upon him for judgment. When it was ruled his hand would be cut off, the man said he forgives him to prevent the punishment from being applied. The Messenger of Allah responded, Why didn't you do it before bringing him to me? So to ensure citizens are afforded their rights, moral laws are enforced. These Islamic laws promote high family values and deter citizens from committing perverted acts. Some prohibitions do not carry any set punishment, such as where there is no involvement with others and does not affect the broader population in general. However, when we see that immoral practices harm others or are displayed publicly, this is where punishments are very strict. Although generally these severe punishments have a very high bar of evidence to what amounts to public acts of immorality. Everybody sins, and that which is done in secret does not meet the evidence criteria to make it punishable under Islamic law. Immoral behaviour Moral sex is that which is engaged in between husband and wife. Therefore, basically all sexual activity outside of this married unit of husband and wife is considered as immoral. Additionally, Anything which harms or disrupts the family unit is considered immoral and also forbidden.
sexual acts of immorality can be categorized as follows. 1. Immoral pre-sex activities. 2. Immoral sex. And 3. Excessive immorality. Immoral pre-sex. Owing to the fact that immoral sexual activities destroy society from the roots, anything that may lead to these immoral acts is also forbidden in Islam. For these preliminary acts, there are no set prescribed punishments, therefore punishments are at the discretion of the judge. Women making a wanton display, displaying herself as sexually unrestrained, music, intoxicants, and men being alone with a woman, masturbation, sexting and pornography, and cross-dressing and transgender. Tabarruj, or women making a wanton display, displaying herself as sexually unrestrained, encourages others to think about illegal sexual activity and is a form of peer pressure. And women of postmenstrual age who have no desire for marriage there is no blame upon them for putting aside their outer garments, but not displaying adornments. But to modestly refrain from that is better for them, and Allah is hearing and knowing. UNICEF in the USA describes how sexualization of women has led to the objectification of women, increased sexual abuse, which in many cases leads to death, and sex trafficking. Music is a tool to promote sexual activities, which Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, warned that Muslims will one day make permissible. And of mankind is he who purchases idle talks, i.e. music and singing, to mislead from the path of Allah. Music is known to promote and increase sexual engagement amongst the youth. Intoxicants Due to the fact that many heinous crimes are committed by people who take intoxicants, alcohol or drugs, the penalty is 80 lashes if they are found intoxicated in public. Western academia states how alcohol and drugs are shown to increase sexual behaviour, which directly results in an increase in sexually transmitted diseases. Masturbation this is the act of satisfying oneself sexually and is considered beyond permissible sexual acts. And those who guard their chastity, except from their wives or that their right hands possess, for them they are free from blame. But whoever seeks beyond that, then those are the transgressors. Western scholars list negative effects of masturbation, many of which affect sexual intercourse later in marriage such as desensitization. Pornography. Tell the believing men to lower their gaze from looking at forbidden things and protect their private parts from illegal sexual acts. That is pure for them. Verily, Allah is all aware of what they do. And tell the believing women to lower their gaze and protect their private parts. Among the negative impacts of pornography is that it leads to the rewiring of the brain's desire patterns, which reduces the desire for marital sex relations. Furthermore, pornography deprives participants of their rights, and in many cases the images are stolen or involve rape. Sexting. This is the sharing of private images which expose private parts. Sexting frequently leads to shame blackmailing, where the girl is then forced into sexual acts out of fear of her images being shared or her parents informed. Additionally, this has been used by pedophiles to prime children for sexual activity referred to as online grooming. Once caught up in these activities, it commonly leads to a life of depression, drugs, crime, and in some cases suicide. Photos should not even be shared between spouses. In the case of divorce, this has led to revenge porn and suicide of women who had their intimate moments shared worldwide. Transgender and cross-dressing. Those who cross-dress and transgender individuals are cursed in Islam and Muslims are not to let them enter their houses. Although not a sexual act, Public cross-dressing and transgender are punishable at the judge's discretion.
these deviant acts are a precursor to homosexual relations and are even harmful for the individuals. Western studies highlight excessive mental disturbance in transgender individuals and note that over 50% have tried to commit suicide. Immoral sex. Fornication or premarital sex. The penalty for one who is not married is 80 lashes, which indicates the severity of this sin. However, as mentioned, the bar of evidence is so high that it almost amounts to public acts of sex. The negative impacts of fornication are many. Guilt and depression, shame blackmailing, unwanted pregnancies, unknown father if a woman takes different partners, and exposure to sexually transmitted diseases. Western academics list negative emotional effects for those who engage in sex outside of marriage. Additionally, many young women despair at the thought of not being able to get married later, and depression when her partner breaks his promise, leaving her to raise a child alone. More and more young girls are falling prey to grooming and being blackmailed for sex and pornography. According to an article published by Cambridge University Press, women who have had an abortion have an 81 increased risk of mental health problems, and sexually transmitted diseases inflict approximately 80% of all sexually active people in Western societies. Furthermore, in addition to children being deprived of their right to know their fathers, in the case of multiple partners, studies show that children are negatively affected by father absence. All of these factors have a long-term negative impact on society. Related to these issues are adoption and sperm donors, which also deny children knowledge of their lineage. Studies show that adopted children are twice as likely to develop mental health issues. And furthermore, children born as a result of egg and sperm donors face the same issues as adopted children and have concerns about marrying unknown half-siblings. Adultery And those who invoke not any other God along with Allah, nor kill such person as Allah has forbidden, except for a just cause, nor commit illegal sexual intercourse, and whoever does this shall receive the punishment. In addition to the possibility of unknown fathers, Adultery destroys the morality of everyone related and is the most common cause of divorce. To understand the gravity of this sin, the penalty is being stoned to death. However, again, the bar of evidence is so high that it almost amounts to public acts of sex or prostitution. With the case of adultery and fornication, the actual penetration needs to be witnessed by four people. However, if only one or two people come forward, then they themselves are subjected to a severe punishment. If it was not witnessed by four just men, then to speak about it will earn a person 80 lashes. And those who accuse chaste women and do not produce four witnesses, flog them with 80 lashes and reject their testimony forever. They are indeed liars. Homosexuality. And remember Lourdes, when he said to his people, Do you commit the worst sin such as none preceding you has committed in the worlds? Verily, you practice your lusts on men instead of women. Nay, but you are a people transgressing beyond bounds. Homosexual intercourse is the worst sin after disbelieving in God or taking partners with him. The penalty has been equated with adultery, although scholars have differed. Therefore, public sexual acts or prostitution would result in the death penalty. Lesser degrees of related crimes, such as anything which advertises homosexuality, would receive lesser punishments at the judge's discretion. It should be noted here that sexual acts refers to penetration. Therefore, it specifically refers to men who penetrate the anus of another man with his penis. Anal sex in general has negative impacts, such as faecal incontinence, and it is the highest risk sexual behaviour for HIV transmission.
Studies show that homosexuals have higher rates of depression, anxiety and are four times more likely to attempt suicide. Gay parents. Studies show that there is a negative impact on children that are raised by gay or lesbian parents and that these arrangements are compromising children's dignity and security. Children with gay parents had much higher rates of emotional and developmental problems. Excessive immorality. Studies reveal that pedophiles with homosexual tendency of a higher ratio of 11 to 1 compared to heterosexuals, which could indicate that homosexual behaviour is a strong precursor to pedophilic behaviour. Additionally, different excessive immoral sexual acts are frequently linked to a single person, further suggesting that uninhibited desires lead to further immoral transgressions. The penalty for all excessive immoral sexual acts is the death penalty. Rape. Data shows that nearly 50% of students in some Western universities are raped or sexually assaulted. And it is well recognised that the traumatic impact of rape can last for years. Incest. The punishment for incest is also the death penalty and is one of the most repulsive crimes. According to statistics, 44% of rape victims are under 18 and over a third are family members. Incest. According to studies, incest produces serious negative self and social impairments. Pedophilia. Around 450 pedophiles are arrested every month in Britain alone. Bestiality. A man arrested in Townsville, Australia, was charged with pedophilia, including incest, pornography and bestiality. And necrophilia. Committed by some troops at war and serial killers who rape after killing. The result. As seen by Western studies, not only are those who participate in immoral practices affected, but also children who are associated. This has resulted in increased crime rates, drug use, depression and suicide. From what basis do Western liberal governments claim that freedom of sexuality is beneficial for society? In fact, under Western liberal governments, the family is not valued to the point that elderly people now die alone at home going unnoticed for up to six months. Is that the height of liberalism? Following one's desires to the point that others are completely neglected? Following one's desires even though it affects others negatively? And the result is a disturbed population where the rights of most citizens are abused. Morality is in a downward spiral of decline and justice is a dream for many. According to the UN, one third of all women have been raped or sexually assaulted and over 80% of women in US Parliament are disrespected and subjected to degrading remarks or threats. In reality, Western liberalism has been the cause of the breakdown of society and led to the violation of most citizens' rights. Research shows that marriage benefits society on all levels. This leads to greater respect within society and in and of itself reduces crime. Islam is the perfect solution and as has been demonstrated in history, can turn a completely immoral and unjust society into the greatest model society that the world has ever witnessed. Where peace and justice prevail and society flourishes. The term gay rights is an oxymoron like saying thief rights or pedophile rights. And while all individuals have their God-given rights, as we have demonstrated, gay practices lead to the loss of those rights by many in society and is harmful even to those who practice it. Therefore, it is considered a sin. So is he who is on clear evidence from his Lord, like him to whom the evil of his work has been made attractive and they follow their own desires? Whenever depression overtakes us, it is because we have distanced ourselves from our Creator and increased in sin. Those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, verily, in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest. We all make mistakes, 
But Allah is the most forgiving. So whatever wrong you have done, turn back to your Creator and seek His mercy. Except for those who repent, believe and do righteous work. For them Allah will replace their evil deeds with good. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. There shall be no compulsion in the religion. The right course has become clear from the wrong. So whoever disbelieves in false idols and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold with no break in it. And Allah is hearing and knowing. May Allah guide us to see the truth clearly in all matters and make it easy for us to follow it. Ameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk. How perfect you are, O Allah, and I praise you. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but you. I seek your forgiveness and turn to you in repentance.